Welcome back to part two of VE Pumps. This is Savage Fabrication, Bradley Carter, behind the camera, Dalton Carter. Does all the editing and puts all the videos up. So he makes all this stuff actually look good and coherent because I like the rambling. So last time we talked about the KSB and a few easy mods and a few small mods as well as going over a lot of the basis of how the injection pump works. We're gonna continue with going forward on how the injection pump works. We went over nomenclature. Uh, we haven't gone over the CCs and stuff yet. We said if you want a real bad VE pump, the Hungry Diesel makes the best one that's been across our dyno. So check them out if you want a really gnarly setup. So now we're gonna get back into our VE pump. Okay. Back to our VE pump. We all know quite a bit about it already. Um, we left off with KSB. So I think we're gonna go back to the pump top. What's in the pump top? And how does it all function? So first things first, this guy here is our pre-boost setting. Um, as you can see, this one here is bo bottomed out quite a bit. So that gives us quite a bit of throttle uh, fuel based on uh, throttle control versus weight on the AFC to have anything to do about it. If we tuned a truck on a down, it'd be cleaner. This would be raised quite a bit higher. This is air in. This is the fuel return. This is the fuel metering screw. This is a air bleed for the AFC. So for this to compress down, um, this bleeds out the extra pressure. There should not be fuel coming out of this. If you have fuel coming out of this, you probably have a faulty return valve here, which is allowing the fuel level to get up higher than where this is. The fuel pin sealing does not seal so tight that fuel can't get by. So if you have fuel coming out here, you probably have a bad return valve. The return valve on these pumps is extremely important. You cannot switch it out with any other kind of banjo sized return valve. They have an internal assembly that's designed to hold a certain amount of pressure at the same time bleed off the proper amount. So we've tried, <laughs> the reason we know this is because we tried to get more fuel to flow through the pump by running a higher flow banjo with a really big lift pump and the truck would not rev smoothly, it would start to pop and sputter above about 32 to 3400 RPMs. Um, as soon as we put the, put the OEM valve back in, the truck ran fine all the way up to 4400. So we have our screws here. The best way to take these off is with a pretty tight fitting uh, flathead screwdriver and a combination wrench on the screwdriver to turn these. These get stripped out pretty easily. These ones are loose for the video, we can pre-loosen them. Maybe I did, maybe not. Nice, that's too soon. It's actually just really tight because there's a lot of pre-boost on this thing. The cool part about the AFC top is it can go either direction. Uh, once you start kind of messing with modifying your throttle linkage and feeds and stuff like that, you can get there. The other thing, to talk about it, this will have a tamper proof cover on it using a small screwdriver. This is why this one broke. It's the only one I've had break on me, but use a really tiny screwdriver. Hammer it down in there, or you can hammer it through the middle and pop that. This also has a tamper-proof cover on it. Just grab it with a pair of channel locks and wiggle it off. So as we can see, the bottom of this pushes on the top of this diaphragm and sets how far down the diaphragm sits, which is our connector or fuel pin. This can go either direction. Um, so for some setups, uh, flipping it to this side because there's too much stuff going on over here will allow you to run just like a braided line or a push lock hind line from here around. It is not directional. Below us we have the diaphragm assembly, their fuel pin. This is not the OEM fuel pin. I have a OEM fuel pin right here. It has been changed out. This one is not ground on. You can see where it went for most of its life. One of the tricks you can do is you can rotate your stop fuel pin. So the deepest part of the taper is the farthest away from a pin that's inside of here. That will give you, allow the pin to travel farther, which allows the fulcrum lever to also travel a little bit farther. 
one of the tricks is this comes, I, could, I tried finding one, I could not find one. Now I have one. There's a nylon spacer right here. A lot of people like to shave them down to a certain thickness. Uh, just take it out. It doesn't make a difference. It won't hurt nothing. Just take the thing out. When you run a Denny T uh, fuel pin or any other, other aftermarket fuel pins, yeah, just take it out. You don't need it. Real easy to take out, hold there, take it off, throw on the new one. So this is a Denny T fuel pin stage two. You can see the really aggressive ramp in this pin versus this one. And it also travels further and you don't have the problem of when you do grind these of them getting really thin, breaking and falling straight down into the pump. I have never personally ground one before. I do know some that have, but it's pretty cheap to just go get a fuel pin. The Hungry Diesel, uh, M&H, and Denny T still all make parts. This is a stage two. If you drive the truck on the street and want to be able to tune it, um, especially with a low stall converter or manual, go with a stage one or a pin that has a, a, a convex profile instead of this concave profile. It'll be much easier to tune. Uh, competition use, uh, we always recommend the stage twos or the concave profile. So, but, uh, sweet little trick. There are two different springs to these and you can even, if you wanted to measure the spring rate of this with a tool, I don't have a uh, tool for that, but the ones out of the intercooled trucks are silver and the ones out of the non-intercooled trucks are red and green. If you want the truck to fuel faster, you can put a intercooled spring into the non-intercooled VE pump because it's softer, it takes less pressure to travel a certain distance. And vice versa, if you're having trouble with big injectors tuning, you can go find yourself a red and green uh, non-intercooled spring, which is stiffer, and use that to slow down the travel rate. Now, neat little trick that I don't really see a lot of people talking about. This is the star wheel. This adjusts how high or low the spring is. So this adjusts, adjusts most of the time you just turn them with the, the screwdriver is a little bit big. No, it seems bad, but it's not. You just come in here and you, there it goes. You can turn this up or down for a fine adjustment on the spring pressure, like the preset spring pressure. So on top of being able to set how much fuel you have pre-boost, you can set how long it takes as far as pressure to build up in the system to get to a full available fuel. Down inside here, it's really hard to see. I don't know if we can probably get a shot of this or not. But down inside is a pin. That pin is what rides on the ramp of the fuel pin. The fuel pin ramp always faces the front of the truck. Or actually, it should always face the pin, which is front of truck. Yep. Can you see the pin in there? What about there? Right there. Yep. So that pin is always facing the front of the truck. Same, the steepest part of your ramp should always face the front of the truck. We like to, once we have these tightened up, we put a Sharpie mark to tell us where the face is at. This is your mechanical shutoff. When this is in the truck and you don't have the electronic shutoff set up or the electronic shutoff is not working, and you're having a emergency or whatnot, just pull this lever back. It will shut the truck off every single time. This puts the full crumb, the lever full crumb in the spill port always open position and the thing will always dump fuel and not inject anything through the system. It's the fuel metering screw. If you ever take this top off, the only way to put it back on is to back the metering screw all the way out. The metering screw is a M, I believe it's an M8 by 1.25 thread. I think it looks like a fine thread. I'd have to double check it. Uh, there's a welded collar on there. If you take a drift, you can see where the uh, it's smashed down a little bit here. Uh, if you take a drift and a vise carefully and hit it where the clamshell parts are, you can break that collar off and then usually rethread it by using the nut. If you do need to do any more uh, thread cleanup, you can get a, a die to clean that up. There is an O-ring on there. It will leak um, if the O-ring is far back or the O-ring is bad. There's a staggered washer setup for sealing. Um, this all needs to stay in place. And a flat hat on the back. This is like a 5 16 8 deal. It doesn't work that great. 
they usually get rounded off. I grab them with a set of really small vice grips and just turn them. That's the easiest way to do it. But when you go to put it on the pump, this needs to be all the way out because this nub will protrude through. And if you try to put it on with the nub sticking through, we can see on our main pump that the fulcrum lever with the top off sits all the way in the back position. And you will try to tighten this down and seat it using the bolts and you will break this off. And if one, it's not a very easily weldable material and the only way you're gonna do it is with a TIG. And if you don't have a TIG, you're gonna be taking the whole pump off and into a shop to be repaired. So if you wanna avoid that, back this thing all the way out. There isn't really a set setting when you start doing mods, unless you're using the same gov spring to put this back in the same spot. You can mark it with a paint pen. What we like to do is turn it in maybe like 50% or so halfway and try and start the truck. And then the truck won't start, we'll go a little bit more, try and start the truck. The truck won't start, we'll go a little bit more, try and start the truck. We'll repeat this process uh, as well as using the throttle pedal to get it to where it'll fire up on the throttle pedal but won't idle. So we know we're in the right direction and we'll keep going. And once we get it running, we can start bringing the throttle up. We can blip it. If the truck isn't smoking, more than likely your throttle index, which is what we talked about in the other video, is in the wrong spot. If it wants to run away um, and is not smoking, you are too far advanced on the throttle index. And if it isn't smoking and is not really revving very well, you're too low on the throttle index. And when you're in the right cog, it will rev great. That's how you can figure that out. So I think we've gone over this pretty well. If you do a delete, what is not said about the AFC deletes, one, you lose all your tunability. They're great for competitive use, not great for street use. You do not tell anybody that drives their truck on the street to get an AFC delete. If you are competing with the truck, AFC deletes are cool. Um, and they can be helpful. Denny T only came out with the AFC delete because he was tired mainly of this O-ring leaking on the throttle lever. The things involved in the AFC delete that aren't mentioned on his uh, page, at least I haven't looked in probably in the last two years, but they weren't at the time, is that most of the components that are in the system do need to get changed over. This seals in an aluminum housing with a ball bearing on each side of this rod here. So this rod will have to get swapped out. Um, that is, you just knock it out from either side and that will come out and go into the delete and the shutoff has to go onto it. And this is the biggest pain. Um, it is cogged on just like the throttle lever is and it needs to go back in the exact same spot or the truck will not run properly. It won't rev to full fuel or it won't idle or it'll be very, very lazy or it just won't shut the truck off. And that's important to have your mechanical shut off working. You can see here, this one has not been tampered with. And if anybody needs a reference point, this foot in here is flat. It's flat with the bottom of the case. Um, so that's really important. It is not just a plug and play type swap. Um, those things have to get changed over and it can cost you a week if you can't, if you don't, if you only have a weekend to do it um, and you can't get it done by the end of the weekend and can't touch it till next weekend, the truck might sit for a week because of uh, not being able to, to get to it because this can take some time to get set up because this spring is fairly stiff and a total pain to get set up right. I think we've about covered everything. I said you just put the, the rod back in there and you hit the ball, uh, the ball seals back in on each side. There's nothing fancy to them. Um, so this one has all the stops taken off of it because we don't need it. We actually set the idle with the fuel metering screw on this injection pump. The other thing that has never happened to me, they do sell a longer one. The only thing with the longer one is they're just black oxide coated and they will rust. Uh, but some people say that they've had to grind the pumps. Um, Greg A had to do his because it looks like the throttle lever, this is an intercooled one, which is normally one people say you have to grind. Um, this lever uh, I think can hit on uh, this hump right here inside the AFC housing. I've never had one do that. You can usually get these things cranked all the way into the point where it wants to run away and then we you know, go back until we feel comfortable giving it to somebody. 
uh, to just drive down the road and do whatever they want with. But that's what this hump right here is the one that usually has to get uh, cut down if this lever is, is contacting it. And you're a lot better off doing all your work on here. This is a lot easier part to clean than doing it with the pump in the truck and this big opening above this. There's no way you're gonna keep uh, material out from the inside of this. We go over governor springs. The OEM spring is a 388 spring. Pretty soft. It will govern out at around 2200 to 2400 RPMs. Um, and there is a difference between the vehicle in gear, manual or auto, versus the neutral rev. They will always neutral rev higher than what they will govern out in gear. This, the most common one, is the 366 spring, which is what's in this pump. This is a 3200 RPM spring, also known as the 366. Remember, the OEM part number is 388. This one is, I want to say it's 388. Yeah. This one's a 366. And it is a much stiffer spring, but is the same length as the 366, and, or the 388. So you can just drop it right in. And it gives you a 3200 gov. And you can manipulate the springs by pulling on them harder. And we went over that in the other video. Be sure if you do that to say, I am fully responsible for if I screw my pump up, because you can do it very easily. The next spring is the 354. This is the 4200 spring. I don't think it's the 4800. Um, this spring is a very big, very stiff spring. Um, I don't believe we have cut this one yet. What you have to do, because since we know that they're the same length, what we have to do with these, because as you can see, they are two very different lengths. So what you need to do is you cut the coils down and then you're gonna take a set of pliers and bend it up. You need to make the 4200, I think there's a 48 or a 4500 spring. They have to be the same length as this, or else you're not gonna get 4200 RPMs with an RPM out of them, and you're gonna have a really hard time getting the things to idle. So, I do know some have just thrown these things in and done the throttle linkage mods and they work, but it's not hard to just go in there with a set of cutters and cut this down, bend up a tab, uh, a wire link, and there you go. So it's noticeably bigger, thicker, and longer. So you do have to modify these springs to fit. It's not hard, we've done quite a few of them. So that's the governor springs. We've gone over the governor weights. Um, the fulcrum lever is this guy right here. What the fulcrum lever is attached to is a collar that is around a single plunger system. Um, we will probably go over the plunger system and the cam lift and stuff in the next video. Uh, we don't want to get these going too long, but we can go over what's happening in the uh, distributor valve, the, basically the distributor valving system, um, the cam lift, the injection duration, uh, how, it, how it does the injection duration, how it, uh, the spill ports and plungers and all that stuff work in the next video. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't think I missed any uh, secret modifications. We went over fuel pins, gov springs, all that jazz. We went over KSB, case pressure, uh, stuff like that. Went over how to safely put the pump top back on, uh, how to how to get the fuel metering screw set up. I can go over maybe real quick before we end this. Um, the you can remove the idle stop and the throttle stop, and if you have your indexing done right. You're gonna have to play with the indexing uh, to get it right. You can use the indexing um, as well as the setting on the fuel metering screw to set the idle. It's on our max effort stuff, that's usually how a ghetto max works. You're going to be using the metering screw to set the idle because you're gonna have the idle uh, linkage. You have the linkage as far back as possible for the least amount of spring tension as possible. Get, and then with the fuel metering screw in all, as far as it can go. So. That's the minimum duration is what we're adjusting with the metering screw at, at the idle condition. There's also a wide open adjustment that's occurring, but we're talking about you know, using it to set idle. You'll use this to turn it up a little bit, turn up a little bit, turn it up a little bit, and you will get the truck to idle start everything it's supposed to do on the fuel metering screw alone. They do make a longer one. I haven't really seen a case where the longer one is super helpful. I have one in my own truck, but it was mainly so I can access the adjustment easier. You, generally you can turn these in plenty far enough to where the thing will run away and get you in trouble. 
Uh, so, and the longer ones do get rusty. They don't have a plated one yet that I've seen. I think maybe THD has a plated one now. So I'd like to say thank you for, if you've been sitting this long through your RVE stuff, real quick, just um, on the pre-boost, all pre-boost does is set where that pin starts on the ramp. So the farther down it is, the, the, far, the farther down the pre-boost is, the farther up the ramp you're starting. Uh, usually street driven trucks, uh, we'll start them pretty low on the ramp and more of the competitive stuff will start to come up the ramp. Uh, but there is a reason to tune on the ASC and not just bury the thing, uh, especially for street driven trucks. The pin is there as a tool and we want to use it to properly tune the truck for street use. And just because the AFC is full uh, at pressure and the pins all the way down, that just means you have full access to the fuel available. If your foot isn't buried, you're not getting full uh, fuel. You're just only getting what your foot is asking for. We're gonna continue on this. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, the VE stuff is certainly, there's a lot to it. Um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it, but there's a lot of good things about it too, when, especially when we start getting to understanding the duration and quantities of fuel and how the, the fuel delivery map looks like. So hopefully that's a really good time. They're fun little pumps. There's a lot of things you can do with them. They get amazing mileage and they tend to make more. They tend to make about two and a half to three times the torque than horsepower just because of that duration and ability to put a lot of fuel in real early. In the comment section, don't forget to let us know what you thought about the video. If there was anything that we missed about the VE pump that you know and want us to add to part three, put it down in the comment section. We'll add it in. The, we're going to get more into the case area, but if we did miss anything in the other sections that we've gone over, uh, please let us know in the comment section. It'll help us make these videos better and inform more people about how the VE pump actually works and how to modify it properly and safely. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell for those notifications when we put up our new videos. And our swipe. Got the really cool shirts. They're active on the website. Uh, and they are super comfy. I like to wear them every time we film. <laughs> Thank you and have a good day.